Hello, my name is Guillermo Gallego, and in this video, we will take a look at the biological principle motivating the event-based cameras, in particular, the dynamic vision sensor. So event-based cameras are biologically inspired in the human visual system. And visual information uh, comes uh, through the eye, uh, from the eye, then through the optic nerve back to the brain. And then in the brain, it follows different uh, paths, which are called pathways, right? And one of them is the what pathway. It's also called the sustained pathway, which comprises the parvo cells, and it's uh, processing the details uh, in the scene. Um, and it's basically processing the information from the photoreceptors in the fovea, and it's uh, slow. The other pathway, it's called the wear pathway, also called transient pathway, and it comprises the magno cells and it's in charge of detecting motion from photoreceptors all over the retina and it's fast. Um, if we had to kind of show a different image for each of these pathways, then we would see, we could model more or less that, I mean, this is an oversimplified view, um, but what would be the, uh, a visual representation of the information in the what pathway would be a sharp foveated image of the scene where we can see uh, the subject, everything in focus. And uh, if we had to show a representation of the visual information in the where transient in the where pathway, that would be uh, the one on the bottom. So in this case, there's a person with the hand and only the white and black dots here, these pixels, um, are actually the, the motion information. And that would be uh, the processing part of this wear pathway. So again, this is an oversimplified uh, explanation of, of how the very complex human visual system works. This is again the two pathways, how the processing works from the retina uh, all the way to different parts of the brain. So it passes through parvo or magna cells and the V1 area, the V2 area, and one captures the details and the other one captures the motion. This is just to show that there is like um, a large body of literature on studying these pathways. Basically, the dynamic vision sensor is trying to mimic uh, some of the processing steps in the dorsal pathway, right, to detect motion. So let's show uh, the difference between uh, the output of a standard camera, which would somehow model the, the sustained pathway, and the event camera, which is the transient pathway. So we are comparing on the left the output of a standard camera and on the right is the output of an event-based camera in the case of a static camera. So in this case, most of the, of the output of the camera uh, comes from the moving objects, right? And we can see that uh, there is some background noise and then there is uh, the hand or the arm that is waving in front of the camera. The, that's causing these on and off events, which are these blue spikes. Remember, this is just a scene that it's uh, output that is asynchronous, so in space time, but we are visualizing the events by binning them, by collecting them into several millisecond slices and producing an image, which is what we see here. So this is the case of a static camera. We don't see the objects that are in uh, that we see in the standard camera because they are not moving. These are not moving edges. Um, however, if we now move the camera around, uh, then events are caused, because the events are caused by moving edges, then we will see that events, so these red and blue dots are triggered everywhere on the image plane, right? The apparent motion of things uh, says that these are moving edges. So these are the two scenarios, the static camera and moving camera. So if we remember where we are, we have a camera. The camera, if we zoom in, has a chip. The chip has some pixels, and each pixel has um, actually the pixels of the event camera 
has a photodiode that converts light into voltage, and then the rest of the pixel contains some circuitry that it's in, char uh, in charge of detecting relative intensity changes. So let's look at uh, how these pixels are designed. They are modeled, uh, as I said before, in the transient pathway, which is also called the dorsal pathway. So we have the eye, light comes through the eye, it goes through the photoreceptors, and the photoreceptors have a biology, right? They are, have, uh, they are connected to some bipolar cells and ganglion cells. And basically this diagram, what it's saying is that each pixel of the DBS, the dynamic vision sensor, or the change detector in the case of the 80s, is designed following the principles of the human visual system, at least this one's. This is a simplification of all the different cells and complex networks that happen in the retina. So there is a first stage where light comes to the photodiode and it's uh, converted. There is light is converted into a current and then this into a voltage. Then there is a second stage that is doing some deep, the modeling the bipolar cell that is doing the differentiating and the amplification. And then there is a third stage uh, modeling the ganglion cells, uh, on and off ganglion cells that is doing um, quantification. So it's comparing this voltage comes here with the uh, two comparators. If we take a look at how uh, a continuous signal is converted at, from here, from the input to the output. So, well, uh, light comes, goes to the photodiode, and then we have its, the photodiode will convert it into eventually a voltage here. So this blue line represents the voltage at this point in, the, in this diagram. And then, um, so this second stage is integrating light. And as soon as light uh, accumulated crosses a threshold, which is given by these comparators, the on comparator, then it's reset and a spike is sent. These are on spikes because they detect brightness increase. So there is a brightness increase, then it resets, brightness increase, triggers an event, resets, and so on. In this other region, uh, light is decreasing. So what happens is that light is integrated and then it crosses the other threshold, the off threshold. And then we have several off spikes or off events and so on and so on. So this is what happens for a single pixel. If we now represent what happens in the whole image plane and we color them the on with uh, blue and the off with red and we bin them, for visualization, this is what we get. So we get um, that the events are mostly triggered at the edges of the objects. In this case, we see that the camera is moving and events are triggered everywhere right? caused by moving objects in the scene. If we take a look at the, a single pixel, how light is converted into events, Imagine that we have the log of the intensity at the pixel and it's this black line and we start at zero and then we say that an event is generated whenever the intensity change by some predefined amount C. So the log intensity at the current time T minus the log of the intensity at the time of the previous event T minus delta T. In this case, we're starting at the origin, that is Z. In this case, plus C, it's a positive event. Then what happens next is that the brightness or intensity decreases by this same amount C, and therefore we have an off event. It keeps on decreasing, off event, off event. Now it increases, we have an on event, and so on and so on. So what happens is that the continuous signal, the light that arrived at the pixel, has been converted, has been transduced into a train of asynchronous events. The information that was in this black signal has been converted into the interspike times of the events. So that's how each pixel in the event camera works. What is an event? Well, each event 
has four quantities of the brightness change. X and Y are the pixel coordinates where the brightness change happen. Then T is the timestamp with microsecond resolution at which the brightness change happened. And then P uh, is the sign of the brightness change. And we say if there is a brightness increase, it's a positive event, also called on event. And if there is a brightness decrease, then we call it a negative event or off event. The sign of the brightness change is also called the polarity, and the polarity is nothing more than the temporal derivative of the intensity at the time of the event. And this can be either the sign of this intensity, partial derivative, and this could be either plus one or minus one, so it's a binary quantity. Some references, well, the list of event-based vision resources uh, as a section on sensor designs and by sensor by inspiration with papers. And these two are two good ones that are recommended for reading. Thank you very much.